So hey guys, this is Trevor here. So today we'll be uh, solving a problem from Code Forces 635D, and the problem is Zenia and colorful gems. So what does the problem state? The problem states will be given three arrays and an equation x minus y whole square plus y minus z whole square plus z minus x whole square, and you got to minimize this equation. So what is x? X can be any element picked from the array A. Y can be any element picked from the array B. Z can be any element picked from the array C. So you need to minimize the given equation. Over in this example, we can pick x as seven, y as six, and z as four. So which eventually gives you seven minus six whole square plus six minus four whole square plus four minus seven whole square, which is fourteen. Now this is the minimum possible value that you can obtain of this equation by choosing x, y, and z from three different arrays. So the brute force of this is very simple. You run three loops. One is i, the other is j, the other is k. i iterates in a, j iterates in b, k iterates in c, and you choose every possible combination, and the minimum of them will be your answer. So the time complexity for the brute force solution will go up to of n cube. And if you look at the constraints. n is 10 to the power 5 so this will obviously give you a tle so we have to optimize this so how do you optimize this equation the common tendency uh, to solve this will be in greedy approach so let's assume you can choose any x then what you can say is you can choose any y that is less than x and then any y that is greater than x but if you are choosing an y which is less than x so to minimize this equation you know you have to choose z such that Z should lie on the right side. Why? Because x is the middle element, and to minimize the entire equation, since it's doing its subtraction, so it's better if you choose nearby elements. So that is the reason we choose y as the nearby element to the left, and z as the nearby element to the right. Similarly, we can choose y to be the nearby element to the right, and z to be the nearby element to the left. So this can be one of the possible combinations. What can be the other possible combination? Greedily, you can also choose y. And then you can choose a number which is less than equal to y and the closest to him. So it will be x on the left, and you can choose any z which is greater than him, but it is closest to him. So it's z on the right. Or you can choose x which is greater than him but closest to him, and z which is less than him but closest to him. In the same way, you can choose z from the third array, and x and y similarly. So you know this. Three can be your possible combinations to find x. So what is x? X can be any element that belongs to the array A. Y can be any element that belongs to array B, and Z can be any element that belongs to array C. So you can choose x in linear time, but then how will you choose y and z? So what is y? Y is nothing but an element lesser than equal to x in the array B. So what does that mean? Let's assume you have the uh, B array sorted. If you have the B array sorted, then you can perform a binary search on that B array and find an element less than equal to x in it, and that would take a log n time to find z, which is greater than equal to x in C. You can do a binary search, which again takes a log of n time. So for this, you have to sort the arrays A, B, and C initially, so that After that, whenever you perform binary search, it only takes log of n. So this condition is nothing but this one. Now, if you want to do this, it's exactly this opposite of it. That means z should be less than equal to x, and y should be greater than equal to x. So z less than equal to x in array C, and y greater than equal to x in array B. So again, this will take log of n if you apply binary search. So quick trick: if you are using C++ instead of doing an extensive binary search, uh, you can use lower bound or upper bound functions. So how will you use lower bound and upper bound functions? Let's discuss about that. So let's assume the array B is this, and your x is six. So how do you find the number y which is less than equal to x, and how do you find the number y which is greater than equal to x? So to find y less than equal to x, what you need to do is you perform an upper bound function in C++. Whenever you perform an upper bound. it always returns an iterator pointing to the exact data element to it so if there is 6 it will search for the next greater element so that is 7 and it points an iterator to it so now you require less than equal to so what you can do is you can subtract the iterator by 1 and you'll point to the position where there lies an element which is less than or equal to x similarly if you want to find greater than what you can do is you can perform an low bound 
So how does low bound work? Let's take two values, x equal to five and x equal to seven. So if x was five, low bound will always point to seven. And if x was seven, then also low bound points to seven. So what does that mean? If there exists a number which is equal to, it will return that number. And if there exists no number which is equal to, it will return the next greater element of it. So in this way, you can find the number which is less than equal to x and greater than equal to x. Similarly, you can do for all the combinations. So for y, you can run a loop in b and get all the y's. For z, run a loop in z and get all the z's. And after that, to get x, it's very easy. Do binary search in a, do binary search in b. And over here, do a binary search on b and on a. Similarly, over here, do a binary search on c and on a. Over here, do a binary search on a and c. Over here, do a binary search on b, c. Over here, do a binary search on c and b. And iterate over a to get your elements. So let's quickly recap it. How do you solve it? So initially, you have to sort all the arrays. Next step, iterate for x in a and then find y in b and c. Similarly, you can perform iteration of y in b and iteration of z in c. So what will the time complexity look like? So for sort, it will take n log n. And for all the operation it takes n log n. So eventually uh, it's near about n log n plus n log n plus n log n plus n log n. So it's 4 into n log n, which fits the time limit of 3 seconds. So let's quickly dive uh, deep into the code. So in the code, what I have done is initially I've taken the array as the input. And the next step, I've sorted the array. Once I've done that, I've taken a minimum as 3 into 1 e18 because the maximum answer that we can get is 2 into 1 e18. So for safety reasons, I've taken 3 into 1 e18. And the next step, run a loop for x in the first array, that is a. And then I've tried to find z and y. But you guys need to be careful. Whenever you do an upper bound minus 1, you got to check if that is greater than 0. Otherwise, if upper bound points to the first element, that is the 0th index, and you do a minus 1, uh, it might give you a runtime error. So certain uh, boundary conditions need to be checked, which I have done over here. Similarly, you can find y and z over here. And once you have done that, you take the minimum of all the combinations. So this was for x. Similar code can be written for y and similar code can be written for z. So over here, I have written a bit of trashy code because I, I had written it during the ongoing contest. So I've written another one for y, then another one for z. So what you can do is you can put this entire thing into a function and then you can just pass on the arrays as a comma b comma c or b comma a comma c for x y z so you can reuse the code basically so once you have done that whichever minimum you get you can simply print that so if you run this code we will get our answers so guys this was all about uh, this problem from code forces in the next video i'll be back again with one of the other problems so guys if you have liked the video uh, press on the like button if you have any comments uh, do leave it in the comment section and uh, do not forget to subscribe and yes press the bell icon too to get notified